Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Joe Zanini. I'm a developer evangelist here at WebEx. Today I'm going to be going over enabling a developer sandbox for WebEx calling and the ability to leverage fictitious PSTN information to conduct extension calling within an organization, leveraging the WebEx call control APIs. Uh, you can see I am at the WebEx developer portal at developer.webex.com. I've logged in with a fictitious admin uh, user credential here. Um, if you are new to developer sandboxes and you want to get one for yourself, you can log into the developer portal here with your current WebEx credentials. Or if you don't have a WebEx account, you can create a free account here at the portal. Uh, click on documentation. On the left hand side here is the link for the developer sandbox. You would click this button to request a developer sandbox and follow the instructions in the doc for setting it up. One quick note about the developer sandbox is it comes with 10 licenses for WebEx organizations to use. So you get 10 licenses for WebEx meetings, 10 licenses for WebEx assistant, 10 licenses for WebEx calling and WebEx messaging, uh, basic and advanced. With that, you can develop bots, you can develop integrations, you can develop embedded apps, you can test meeting functionality with SDKs and widgets that extend longer than the 50 minute limit, I believe it is, for free WebEx accounts. Uh, so lots of functionality with this utility um, at, and you can just request one and they're free um, and they don't come at any additional cost. Now I've logged in to a brand new uh, control hub account. So admin.webex.com is the control hub. When you get uh, your developer sandbox, you're gonna get an email with uh, credentials to log in at the admin portal. So here I'm in the control hub. Right away, I'm gonna go over to my user section and I'm gonna see that admin user that comes by default out of the box. And when I click on that user, I'm brought to this profile page. And if I scroll down on the profile page, I can see the WebEx licensing um, that comes out of the box. Um, for WebEx calling, it is set up for one-on-one -on -one calls and non-PS10 calls. That would work, I think, uh, but I'm gonna take it one step further and enable WebEx calling uh, professional. So I'm gonna edit licenses here, click on calling and enable WebEx calling professional here. Um, if you were setting up an actual PSTN uh, uh, enabled account or, or if you had a PSTN connection that you can test with, that's even better. Um, but for developers that don't have that access, you can come in here and, and follow what I'm doing and still conduct intern, internet work or inter-organization calls with your WebEx calling account. So I'll click on save here. What I'm going to do is add an extension for later use. I'll call it 111 and I'll click save. All right, and you can see WebEx Calling Professional was added. I'll click close. And at this point, one would think I can execute a, a call leveraging the APIs. So if I go to the documentation here and I go to the full uh, API reference, click on call control, uh, we'll go to the dial here and I'll type in an extension, the one that I just created for myself. So it's like I'm calling myself. I'll run this and I get a 400 response um, because I haven't gone through the full setup yet. And we'll go through the steps now. So I'm back at the control hub. On the left-hand side, I'm gonna scroll down to calling. And then I'm gonna click on locations. And we can see by default, there's always one uh, location in which our organization exists. I'll click on that. We can see that there's no P PSTN connection. I'll click on manage and then um, it's asking for a connection type when i click the drop down we can see i don't have any trunks or, or route groups created so what i'll do is click on this blue trunk text and create a fictitious trunk i will add the trunk i will select its location i will name it test, test trunk i'm going to leave this registration based if i change it to certificate based then it's gonna ask me to set up devices and I'm really not interested in that for this demo. So I'm gonna leave it at registration base so we can just use the APIs. I'm gonna click save. We can see that my trunk was successfully created. It's been assigned uh, a location. And then what I'll do is I will click on locations again, click on the site, 
I will click on manage PSTN again, and I will now add that trunk that I created. I'll confirm that this is mine, even though I know this is fictitious, it's mine nonetheless. Now I have the ability to add numbers to this location. I'm gonna use a fictitious number, so it's not connected to any network. So even if I put a real number, we wouldn't be able to call it or, or use it because it's not connected to any uh, public network for telephones. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to enter some a fake number here. We were going to use my current area code and 8675309. Let's add our dash. And then to get it to add to the system, I need to hit comma. I'll hit save. And now I have a phone number linked to an account and I can close this. So I have a location that set up for PSTN with a trunk and a phone number. Now, what I'm going to do is add this, assign this phone number to my user. So I'm going to go over to the user section. I'm going to click on my user again. I'm going to go over to the calling section. I'm going to click on this uh, primary extension that is lacking a phone number, and I'm going to add that phone number here. So according to WebEx, uh, in the control hub, if someone were to call this phone number with this extension, they would reach this admin user. And now I fully set up my WebEx organization, my sandbox organization to be able to execute API calls for extension dialing. So if I create another user and I assign another uh, uh, extension to that user, let's say 222, this user would be able to call that user with that extension. Um, to prove this, in the call control API, where we just got a 400 bad response, I'll run this API again. And this time we get an actual call that happened with a call ID. So we got a call event that happened with a call ID that we can now monitor for uh, events with webhooks, etc. So I really hope that helped out developers approaching the, the, the tool set uh, with, with wanting to test the call control APIs. Um, if you have any questions or want to reach out to us, we're all available here. The developer evangelism team at least is available and uh, waiting for questions here at the developer community. So don't hesitate to reach out to us. I look forward to hearing from you and, and happy coding.